Greetings, it's Doc Griffin, your Swing Surgeon Director of Club Fitting Operations, and it's time again for the doctor's house call. Uh, today I'm going to do a video that is a little bit different than my normal. I'm not going to be talking about the actual art or science of fitting. Today I'm going to talk to you more about what a fitting is not. Um, it's more precisely what a fitting will not do. And it's kind of prompted by uh, some feedback or a response I got uh, from a gentleman just recently, clubs that I built. And uh, to get into this, I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction that goes back even a few years ago. Whereas uh, I met one of our Surgites, and he was interested in getting his clubs properly fit and everything. And he came to me, and we did his fitting. And yes, his clubs were not properly fit to him, and it caused uh, some basic swing flaws and bad habits. Um, building the set, got him to him. I guess it was a month to a six weeks later. I get a phone call. And he's uh, complaining basically that, Doc, I'm not hitting these clubs uh, any better than I hit my old ones. Now, I, I will try to be as tactful as I possibly can regarding this gentleman and his golf swing, but calling it a golf swing actually probably is being more benevolent than what I really should. Um, there wasn't much of a golf swing there. And um, this leads me to uh, the next communication, the most recent communication. Now this doesn't happen often, but it happens once in a while. And I think it's happened enough now that I need to do a video and address this specifically. Um, gentleman sent me an email, he got in the clubs and was disappointed. And I am terribly sorry about that. But one thing that I can assure you, once in a blue moon, I will make a mistake in the actual building of a club. I will get distracted or whatever. But as a rule, that doesn't even happen. And one thing that I can assure you that in a fitting, I don't make mistakes. The information that I gather is precise and 100% correct. And based on that, then I can build a set of clubs that fit the person's dynamics. Now, let me, let me go back to one of my favorite illustrations and analogies of taking an archer, you know, a person that shoots a bow and arrow. Now, I can give someone trying to execute that skill of shooting a bow and arrow, a quiver of crooked arrows. Now, out of a hundred shots, they may hit the bullseye once or twice. Now, let's take the same archer and give them a quiver of straight arrows and give them a hundred shots. How many times will they hit the bullseye? And of course, most of you out there going, don't know. It would depend upon his skill level. And there you have it. You hit the nail right on the head. Giving you a set of properly fit equipment does not ensure that you're going to go out and suddenly be ready for the tour. It also doesn't ensure that you're going to be able to go out and lower your handicap immediately. It just doesn't happen that way. First of all, you've been playing with a set of equipment that who knows what was wrong with them, whether they were too long, too heavy, too flat, too upright, too, too whatever. And you have developed, the majority of you have developed some bad habits to compensate for the clubs that don't fit you. Now, just because I put the right equipment in your hand that now fits you, doesn't stop you from swinging your old way. 
It just isn't magical. Sorry. And I think what has happened for a lot of you that have listened for the last several years to Don and Dave and Greg and myself about the benefits of getting properly fit with your equipment, you've had some misconceptions of, of what would happen once you got your properly fit equipment. It's, it's not a, a magical dust all of a sudden boom I can go out and now shoot terrific golf. It just doesn't happen. If the skill isn't there or the proper execution of the golf swing, it doesn't matter what you've got in your hand. It's not going to work. But what proper equipment will do will allow you to make the proper swing. It doesn't make you make the proper swing. So. The benefit of getting fit is still valid. It will put you in equipment that will benefit you and allow you to learn and execute the swing properly rather than having to make compensatory moves in order for you to fit your equipment. It's much better to have the equipment fit you. But understand going in if you're considering getting a fitting, which I think is very worthwhile, but going in, do not have the misconception that once you get your equipment, suddenly you're going to go out and burn it up and you're going to see all these remarkable improvements. Now, that's not to say also that you won't see immediate results and benefits because I've had uh, far more people have immediate success but then there are those that the learning curve is a little bit longer and it takes them a while to unlearn the compensatory moves and to learn the right swing but it is doable and it's not just doable it is more probable not just possible but I want you to know going in that getting a fitting and a properly made set of clubs is not suddenly going to drop your handicap five or ten points. In fact, the most recent communication I got, the gentleman's handicap had gone up. But it also was from a time frame of January to March where uh, it's cold, um, the ball's not traveling as far, we're wearing more clothes, it's more difficult to make a proper swing. There's all kinds of things going on. Plus, as golfers, uh, I can tell you that during the year you will have peaks and valleys. Generally speaking, you will have at least one uh, period during the year where your game just goes downhill and in the toilet. And then for some reason it comes back. Some of us have two mountaintops and two valleys. That's, that's normal. I mean, you see it on tour. Uh, one guy goes out one day, shoots 63, comes back the next day, shoots 78. Was it his clubs? Don't think so. It was the uh, operator. And one other thing that I want to stress. Um, when we build clubs, we're building to fit the individual. And one thing that I, I constantly battle is the mindset that I want more yardage, more yardage, more yards. Well, I could build you a club that would give you 20 or 30 more yards, but I can't build it and promise you that you're going to hit the fairway. Uh, it'll spray all over the place. True, true scenario here, I had a gentleman many, many years ago come to me because he couldn't keep his driver in play. We did his fitting, I built him a driver, he went on his way. He comes back two and a half months later and he's not happy. I'm just not hitting this driver like I thought I should. So we go back over, I had some time, put him on the launch monitor, let him hit golf balls, and I'm watching him stripe everything down the middle. Just a nice, soft little draw. Finally, after about 15 shots like this, I stopped and said, okay, exactly what is it that you're not happy with? He says, well, I've lost yardage. And I said, just how much large yardage have you lost? He said, oh, 
on average about five to six yards. And I said, let me see if I have this correct. You came to me some time ago and you couldn't keep your driver in the fairway and much less keep it in play. So we did a fitting, we built you a driver that you're now hitting dead center, finding the fairway, but you're five to six yards shorter than your spray shots. I said, am I, am I correct in, in the evaluation of what I'm seeing here? He looked at me, took his driver, and as he's walking off, he says, thank you for your time, sorry to bother you. And that's what I, I mean, that's kind of something that I deal with on, on several different occasions. You know, if you're hitting one of my drivers 10 yards shorter than your driver, that can be expected. But let's, let's compare apples to apples and let you go hit 10 shots with each club. Put some face tape on your, your longer driver and then put some face tape on your shorter driver and go hit 10 shots and tell me whether or not on that long driver you hit the center of the club face as often as you do with the short driver. I'll bet you a dime to a dollar you don't. We test that when you come in for your fitting. If you could handle a 45 inch driver that well, I would have built your driver that well. But the thing is, that one or two times out of 10 shots when you hit that 45 or 46 inch driver dead center, it's going to go further than a 44, or 43, 44 and a half. It's going to go further. But it's the hitting the ball in the center that gives you the maximum ball speed that is essential. And two times, three times out of 10 just ain't good enough. So, uh, you know, when you come to see me, I'm building you a driver and clubs that optimize distance and dispersion, not one over the other. It's a combination. I want to give you the maximum distance that you can reasonably achieve, but with the greatest amount of accuracy as well. So if you're going into a fitting thinking, hey, I'm going to give me a driver that's 20 or 30 yards longer, don't waste your time. None of us build clubs for that purpose. We're building to get you this maximum distance with the best shot dispersion, which equals accuracy as we can. Now, I appreciate you letting me have this forum today to kind of air some of this out, but I felt like it was time that it needed to be handled so that, that we can kind of put to rest some of the, the things that uh, have come up from fittings and so forth. But I still say, Better golf is just a fit away, but you also have to apply a better swing in there as well. So uh, it's, it's a combination of the two. Thanks, that does it for me. And as always, we here at uh, SSGM appreciate your support and your time and all you guys that participate on the blog. And again, if you have questions, you want something dealt with, send us an email, uh, give us a call, whatever. And we'll get to it and, and give you a response as soon as possible. Now I'm still going to sign off to, for you guys to remember that. Let's hear it. Better golf is just a fit away.